Welcome to another installment of Soda 360, a series of videos that I'm doing that focus on the how-to for summits on the air. In this installment, we're going to talk about navigating and more specifically, charting. Okay, at this point, you've got to be thinking to yourself, this guy is out of his mind. Why am I even listening to him? If he can't even figure out what is east or west of something else, how the heck does he even find his way home after work or much less off of a summit? His wife asks herself that same thing all the time. Anyway, uh, let's get back to it. CQ, CQ, CQ. This is November 1, Charlie Lima, Charlie. Summit's on the air. Okay, that guy had a few good points, but here's why you should listen to me. I've been able to make it up to and back from around 150 summits at this point. So um, my knowledge of charting applications and what have you has definitely helped me um, get up there and get home. Um, but there's more to using a charting application. It's not just getting, uh, keeping from getting lost, but it also helps me do some planning. That is, figure out how I'm going to get to the summit. A lot of times, there is no trailhead. I have to figure it out on my own. And um, there's some tips and tricks that I'll show you on how to maybe find trails and roads that aren't published on any chart. So... Um, I'll go over some of the requirements uh, that I had when I started looking for uh, charting mapping applications. Um, then I'll talk about a few of the charting apps that are out there, and I encourage you to do your own research. Um, I'm going to focus on all trails. So that's the one that I use every day uh, for soda, and obviously the one that I know the best. Um, I'll get into some of the features and what have you and why I chose it and I'm going to show you how to use it. We're going to go through some basic um, charting with it, then a little bit more advanced, and then some cool features that you can use with Soda Maps to make it even more powerful. So it's a really good match for summits on the air, I think. But there are other applications out there, and I invite you to take a look at those as well. So with that, let's get started. Okay, let's start with requirements. Um, and let me also point out, I'll say charting, but I, uh, most people refer to it as mapping applications. Um, I used to do a bunch of flying and, and that was just kind of the lexicon that we used. Same thing, charts, maps. So, uh, let's talk about the requirements. So, um, number one, ability to create your own maps. Uh, that's, that's kind of a given. I want to create maps to be able to get from point A to point B. Um, I want to be able to save them. Uh, not just create them and, and print them out. Um, and so that way I can modify them later. I can use them on my phone. This is super important as uh, for soda because I want to be able to whip out my phone and uh, see if I'm still on the still on my uh, correct course. Um, offline access. This is a huge one and that turns out all the ones that I looked at do support this. If you're going to look for mapping applications uh, reviews, make sure you put in hiking. Um, you'll come up with all the applications that support offline access because you should always assume that you will have no cell phone access on uh, when you're out doing soda. If you're in the city, certainly around LA except to San Diego, uh, you probably will, but uh, uh, any backcountry hiking, just forget about it. Um, I want to be able to print my charts. I assume uh, everything's going to break. Part of that comes from flying, but uh, you always want to have backups. And if I'm going to an, an, into an area that's a bit sketchy, um, I'll print the, some charts out to take with me. Um, so that can be pretty handy. It, it might quit working, or worst case, um, you drop your damn phone, and it wipes it out, and now you're SOL. So don't want to be there without printed charts. Um, easily share it with others. So I'll make charts. I send them to my wife. I also send it to another person I know that's in search and rescue. 
uh, because you never know. Um, the other thing is it fits my style. I looked at some other, uh, another app in particular uh, that I did a review on, and I'll put a link to that uh, in, in, my, uh, in the description below. But it kind of fits my style, and I'll talk more about that. And then the last is bonus. Uh, being able to turn on tracking or recording is really cool. And um, I started doing that from day one and keeping track of how many miles I hiked. And um, it's, it's pretty amazing. It really adds up. So that's all there is. The requirements that I can think of right now that I kind of had when I'm going into this. And uh, hopefully it spurs some, some food for thought as you uh, look into this as well if you haven't already chosen an app. Okay, there are a few applications out there. Um, when you do go out and look, I would say, suggest that you look at uh, these three. Um, they tend to pop up uh, in the top three when I've uh, done my research. Um, certainly all trails, which we're going to cover here in more detail. Uh, Caltopo, at the time that I looked at that, <clears throat> they did not have a app for the iPhone. They do now, so um, I'm I, I saw it out there in the store as I prepped for this video. Uh, the other one I looked at is Gaia GPS. Um, and I actually tried it on a, on a Soda Summit uh, just to test it out. I liked their app. Um, I just couldn't get used to their charts. Just the way they color them, etc. Um, and some of the usability. All trails seem to fit me a little bit better. And that's when I said uh, try to find a mapping application that fits your style. Um, I couldn't really put my finger on why um, All Trails was a little bit easier for me and I liked the way the charts looked a little bit better than uh, the Gaia apps. So go ahead and try them both. Uh, they're both free um, but in order to get really the full features you need to pay a little something and it's really cheap. I think it's 30 bucks or less for an entire year. And for the value that I get out of them, it's totally worth it. Um, I'm pretty sure in all trails, you have to pay for it in order to get the offline uh, maps. But it's totally worth it. Because um, we're going to go through, and I think you'll find out why. So there you go. There's there's the top three. And uh, in this video, we're going to focus on all trails. Okay, you're probably wondering why I chose all trails. Well, let's look at that really quick. I really like their vector graphic charts. Uh, they're very clean, uh, easy to read, and um, that makes a big difference when you're out there using the app. Um, I really like the shaded topo as well. It, um, it helps me better understand the terrain that I'm going to get into, especially when I'm trying to imagine uh, by just looking at the topo charts what the terrain is going to be like um, when I'm sitting in my office doing some planning. Um, there's a social aspect that allows me to get info from other publishers easily. Um, this can come in super handy, as I've mentioned, I think, before. Um, I was unable to find a route to Sheephead Mountain, but because and uh, there were no published trails or anything else, but because a, another hiker had published their route, um, basically a recording of the, the route that they took, I was able to find that and then, with the press of a button, turn it into a map. So, very cool. Um, I've also used it to take one of my recordings because when I got to the trailhead I found a better route to the uh, summit and I took it. Because I recorded it the next time I went there I just brought up the recording and said make this a map. Um, you can do that from your phone or from, uh, from your PC. Uh, typically all the charting by the way will be done from the PC uh, not from the app uh, for all trails. Um, it's easy to chart, chart in, um, edit, customize, etc. Um, I had already mentioned the vector uh, maps are pretty darn good. Um, but it also has other views that you can throw overlay on top. So you have USGS topographic um, that you can lay on the same exact terrain as well as satellite and roads and more. Um, satellite, uh, well, let me first talk about USGS. There have been times when I didn't see a trail or anything um, on all trails, but I brought up the USGS topo, and uh, there was a old road um, on that map, so I was able to kind of help me chart a path to the summit. Satellite is really cool because I'm going to show you in a bit a summit that has absolutely nothing charted out to it, no trails whatsoever, but because I had a satellite view, 
you can see the roads and trails and everything clear as day. So comes in super handy. Um, there are some overlays on it, although that's really not why I chose it. I don't because I don't use them, um, but they are there. Uh, you can overlay weather for the area you're going to be in, etc. So that can be handy. Um, offline access. This is an absolute must um, that you be able to access all your charts while you're offline. You do have to download them. Obviously, you want to do this before you leave your house. But um, I assume that I'm not going to have cell service when I'm out hiking, which is true, especially if you're in the backcountry in Arizona, etc. Um, you're down in valleys, etc., that just don't have cell phone access. So uh, that's one of the top features, actually. It's really easy to share maps uh, right from my phone or from the PC uh, to other people. Um, I always send a link to the map um, for the area they're going to be hiking in to my wife and uh, to a search and rescue guy that I know because he'll probably be the guy called when I don't come home. Um, I can print out custom charts. Uh, this is really handy if I'm going into a sketchy area. The reason is I always assume stuff is going to break and uh, kind of comes from flying is just assume that uh, you need some backup of some sort. So um, maybe you drop your phone or it runs out of batteries. You don't want to be totally hosed uh, and get lost. Okay, and the other feature is uh, a recorder. So you can track, keep the number of high, uh, miles you hiked and the elevation gained. I've been keeping track of this since October of 2017 and it's pretty cool to look at the number of miles that I've hiked and the number of thousands of feet uh, I've climbed over 100,000 feet. Um, it's a metric, but it also kind of gave me a target for the next year to try to beat. Um, you can overlay the route in the little recorder on top of uh, the map that you've created, which is kind of cool. Um, you can create a map from your track uh, or from someone else's. I had mentioned that earlier. And um, you can edit the other thing here is you can edit the endpoint. So if you forget to turn off the recorder until you're like 20 miles down the road, when you get home, you can grab that endpoint and drag it back to actually where the car was parked. So that's kind of handy. So those are some of the top reasons uh, that I can think of to choose all trails, and, and that's why I'm using all trails today. So um, with that, let's get into using all trails. This is the opening screen for all trails. Uh, and the upper right hand side, you can see that I've uh, logged in up here. Um, I'm not sure what the 59,000 means, but whatever. Um, so let me just show you a few of the features here. I'm going to click on Explorer and this is going to bring up a map uh, that's uh, nearby where I live and I'm going to go and show you a summit here that's uh, just because I'm familiar with it. I'm going to roll my uh, mouse wheel forward and just, whoa, here we go. We're up here by Black Mountain and um, ew, we're going to go right here to Black Mountain. We're going to hover over this and you can see that it highlights some various trails as I um, roll over these. Now some of these could be recordings or they're published uh, from, I don't actually know how all trails get some of these, but um, they actually may uh, kind of procure some of these or have people write these. So I'm going to click on this one because we're going to go up to Black Mountain Road, excuse me, up to Black Mountain. I'm going to go here and uh, just click on that and there you go. I don't have to do any charting at all because it's already been done for me. I just, I'm just i using someone else's. And what I can do is um, I can save this. It looks like I've already saved it, but you can save this away and then pull down the maps uh, for offline use and you're on your way. Um, so let's actually save to my favorites. All right, going up here to the upper right, you'll see Save Map. Um, here's where the magic starts happening because now this is my map. I can update this thing. In fact, let me just zoom in and say, okay, um, I want to edit this route. So I'm going to click on the little pencil there on the left-hand side. And as you can see, it's a total of 3.74 miles round trip with an uh, elevation gain of 761 feet. Sometimes if you get into routes that have up and down and up and down, 
when you go back um, it will continue to add elevation gain. Okay now that we've saved that map I'll show you up in here I'm going to go up here and I'm going to say maps it's going to list all my maps uh, the latest one first looks like I've got 111 maps here I'm going to bring up that one um, it's saved and here you go so I can go in and update this uh, map add some other routes to it if I want um, let's say uh, so let, let's go ahead and do that um, if I drive up to here to Hilltop Park uh, there's another way to use this thing I'm going to show you how to create a new route so I might want to do this one but let me chart in some alternate routes maybe this roads closed for some reason there's construction or something else and um, when I go to some summits especially ones that I'm super unfamiliar with I might actually chart a few different approaches up to the mountain so I'm gonna do that one I'm gonna do that right now actually looks like there's another way you can do it up here and come around or down this way so let's take the Nighthawk Trail we're gonna go up here and park at Hilltop Park so I'm gonna say I want to draw a new route I'm gonna give it a color here of green and then I'm gonna choose routing up here this is really important there's two ways you can draw maps or you can have automatic routing turned on and I'm gonna turn it on for hiking which is a default and if you want to learn more you just click on this guy that kind of leads you through it so let's take a look at that kind of next step up from the super basic um, basically the autopilot version so I'm gonna go in here to the trailhead which is right here at the parking lot so I'm gonna click on this guy uh, once for my starting point and then I'm gonna click here and you'll see that it's automatically routing me based on how it can connect these published trails together so I'm actually gonna go all, zoom out a little bit farther and go all the way to my endpoint which is here and so let's see if it can do it yep it automatically routed me this way there's two ways I could have done this one or it could have gone over here so let's see if I can modify this guy there we go so it uh, took the other route and voila so now I have two ways to get there um, and it l I can just go over here the one last thing I need to do is that's a total of 1.9 miles I'm gonna click out and back so it'll calculate the uh, elevation gain in both directions you can see it went up just a little bit and then I'm gonna save this so there you go the first usage of all trails I've done two things I've used their automatic uh, just completely uh, taken someone else's pu published route and just made that my own um, and then I added to it as kind of another step if the published route wasn't there as you can see you can find your summit and then uh, create a route to it so let's do one more um, because a lot of times you, it's it's kind of hard to find you know where the the trailhead might be um, etc it kind of assumes that you know quite a bit so let's let's do one more thing I'm gonna do um, I'm gonna plan a route uh, excuse me maps are gonna create my own map so it's gonna give me a blank slate to start with okay so the first thing we need to do is find the summit now um, I've gone to soda atlas which is SOTL dot AS and it has all the soda summits. so just go to the area that you want to try to find a soda summit for and you zoom in I'm actually hovered in over here Black Mountain and it looks like there's a, they have a route up here already but um, there's been 45 activations up there already you'll probably see my name a bunch of times I've gone up there a few times to test equipment etc um, so I'm gonna click on that and then I'm gonna click on the the summit name and this is uh, important here because um, I want to get the latitude and longitude of the summit and I'll show you why so I'm gonna copy the latitude and I'm gonna jump over to soda maps we're on my brand new map that we're making right now um, hey, let's give it a name uh, let's just call it Black Mountain Lesson all right so we gave it a name there I'm gonna save that we gave it a name by just pressing edit here 
Now I'm going to do, I need to drop a waypoint because I don't know where this thing is on the map. It's a, it's a summit out in the middle of nowhere. So I'm going to call it, what was the name of the summit? I'm going to give it, I'm going to change the latitude. And this is uh, Whiskey 6. Oh, wow. oh, I'm jumping around here. So what we're going to do is copy the longitude. You'll see it's a negative number. This is really important that you remember that because we don't want to lose that negative number. If you just double click on the number, by the way, it highlights the entire number. And there we go, latitude and longitude. The last thing I need to do is give it a name. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to paste that in there. And I'm going to say soda activation zone. Done for that, and I'm going to say show the title, and now I'm going to save it. There it is. Hey, there it just popped up on the map. There it is. I had no idea where this thing was, so now let's zoom in. You're going to use the same procedure no matter where the summit is to help you find the trailhead. So now as I zoom in, I see that there's multiple ways to get up there. And um, I'm going to do just what I did before which is go out here and create my own custom map. I'm just going to drive right up here. This looks like it's it may be a road or something. I don't know. So let's take a look at the, one of the other maps um, by clicking on the actual map layers down here in the lower right hand side. We're on the all trails map, but I'm going to bring up the satellite view and look at this. Oh, looks like there's a bunch of equipment up there. Um, and in fact, I've been up there and there is a ton of equipment, satellite dishes and all kinds of stuff. So as you zoom in a little bit farther, you can see that this is a road, um, not a trail. And uh, it's pretty obvious because they give it a name. But even if they don't give it a name, you know that there's going to be a road to this place because there's so much gear up there and they have to get up there to maintain it. So now that I know that, I'm going to zoom out. And I'm going to go to the beginning of this road. Now, in our previous, what we did before, is we were using all trails. And we knew that the trailhead was right down here. But uh, let's go ahead. We're going to go routing. Uh, we can use the routing feature because um, there are trails or roads. And I'm just going to click there. I'm going to click on the end. Well, that is not what I wanted it to do. Okay, so when that happens, what you do is, let's see if we can just drag it around over here. Yep, so you can just drag it around um, to a, a piece of it and drag it over to the other portion. The other thing you can do is um, just click on different segments. So let me show you how to do that. I'm going to do a control Z. We dropped our starting point and then I'm just going to click and make sure Oops, oh, that was weird. I'm going to just click on places along this route. And if it's a really long route, this can be handy, especially if there's a lot of different ways that you can go. And that will keep the um, mapping software uh, to where it will basically create exactly the one you want. Now remember, it's sticking to the trails um, that are published on all trails. So that's how you do that one. We're going to, it's automatically, whoops, it's not automatically saved. I need to press the save button here for the route. And you can see that it automatically figured out the elevation gain. And um, yeah, let's see if we can go back and edit that. I'm going to click on out and back. And um, it's already calculated the miles for us. Now, there is no up and down on this. It's pretty much a constant upgrade. So the elevation gain did not change. So there you go. That is the end of the basic mapping um, for all trails. The other thing that I showed you was how to use um, the satellite view. And I'm going to the next uh, example of this. We're going to do some drawing of map of a, of a chart because we're going to go and find um, that we there are no trails whatsoever to this next summit. Okay, this next summit is SC-297. So um, I want to 
uh, create a chart to that. So I've created a new map. Um, let's give the map a name here. We're going to call it uh, Whiskey 6 slash Sierra Charlie 297. All right, I'm going to copy that, highlight it, and copy it because I'm going to use that in just a second. So while that's saving, I'm going to go over here to Soda Atlas and I'm going to search for that summit up here in the top and find out where the heck this thing is. Oh, great. It's actually Whiskey 6, not Whiskey Delta 6. That'll be the problem. All right. Uh, you might want to listen to that guy at the beginning of the video. Okay, so now we are here. Here's the summit. Uh, it looks like it's over in Flint Springs. This, you can kind of zoom out and zoom in. It's over here by Flint Springs. So let me get the latitude and longitude, and let's get started in Soda Map. So I'm going to drop a new waypoint, and I'm going to put it in here. And I need to go get my longitude. So I'm going to copy and paste that into this box here. I'm going to say show the title and this is Whiskey 6 Sierra Charlie 297. All right, I'm going to save this. Let's see where it is. Oh, it's over here near San Diego. So let's zoom in and let's look for some trails. If we can find some trails, that is much preferred. Um, I try to never bushwhack or create my own trail wherever possible. Um, if I do have to do that, I also uh, try to find any trail that will um, that I can use, whether it's a horse trail, jeep trail, anything that will help me uh, preserve the country as if we get out there and start crashing around the bush when it's not necessary, we're tearing things up. And since this land belongs to all of us, um, that can be, uh, that's just not cool. So anyway, um, as you can see, there are no trails. So let's bring up, just in case, the U.S. topograph, topographic map and see if it has any. So check this out. There are some roads that are charted on this thing, but they're kind of hard to see matched up with where I want to go. But this is going to be helpful. I could use and just draw based on this. But let me see if there's anything else out here that might help me. So let's use a satellite view. Hey, check this out. So the reason why the satellite view may be a little bit better than the US topo is because this is actual real life. Sure, these satellite images, or uh, uh, sometimes they're taken and, and uh, combined with satellite uh, images from like aircraft um, pictures. But if we zoom in, these are definitely roads and trails that I could probably use. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to use the drawing program um, because we can't we can't create a route um, with this uh, without that. So let's go over here. Okay, there's one other piece of information here. I was trying to find the best way to get there and a friend of mine told me that there is a trailhead right up here in this neighborhood. He also said that the trail starts right here and goes between two homes and it is a marked public trail. So step number one, uh, don't encroach on anybody's uh, private property and we're able to do that and I found the path which is right here. So he said it's right next to a very long driveway to this guy's house and uh, this is the path right here that will allow me to go around his property and over along these. So let's get drawing. So I'm uh, going to go out. I'm going to choose red and I'm going to say drawing. And a drawing is just that. I'm going to click and then every click it's going to bring me right through um, where I want to go. And if I draw this, and when I get there, if I find there's a fence right here, obviously I'll be outside of this person's property, but I want to make sure I do that. The only way to really do that is uh, when you're on the ground. What I want to try to do is get to this road over here, or trail, actually it's a trail. So 
what I'm gonna do is just click around this guy and I know I need to go over here and then I can get to this trail and make my way down so I can probably do it this way and all we need to do is follow this and again this is all guesstimating when I get there I may need to take a little bit different route but this will help me a lot of times I've been able to see through the trees a trail so as you can see I can actually identify it here um, so we're just going to keep doing that and now that I'm on the on the road I can just keep clicking so I'm going to hover over the end mark here I'm going to hold the shift key down and I'm just going to drag so now we have a little bit way, better way of doing this I'm going to come up and around I'm going to zoom in just a little bit and uh, just keep drawing here I'll go up and around and I may need to zoom out to get a better view of where I need to go so let's find our summit make sure we're going the right direction here's our summit over here so we can just keep drawing um, the reason why we have to do this again is there are no published tracks so we're just using the satellite view uh, to do this and I found the registration is incredible so this thing really works well so I'm gonna follow this and remember we're gonna bring this up on the cell phone um, while we're hiking and the cool thing about the cell phone is you can bring this layer up and you can say geez there is no road here but wait a minute look at this road I could just follow this one up and around so if there's something wrong uh, for instance if I'm actually charting a big gully or something uh, which I think I might be um, then I can follow a different road um, on the fly so you actually have all this knowledge and ability on your phone you just can't draw the route on your phone uh, which is kind of a bummer but um, that's the way it goes sometimes so here we're going to follow this road up and around um, I'm cheating a little bit because um, well, let's see am I Oh, here we go. Okay, nope. So, so there's a solid line right here. I can tell you I'm cheating a little bit because I know the terrain here. I've been up here. There's actually a fence right here. So I know that we have to stay on this trail and not use that road over there, although it does look awful inviting. I'm getting a little sloppy here. But the other reason why we're drawing this out is so that if um we lose the trail we can find it again so that's the other advantage of doing this is you can say okay i know there's probably a trail you know you get lost and you get up here and it's like oh wait a minute the trail's down here so you can get and find it yourself um again i'm going to cheat a little bit because i know you can't use this road it's it's on private property i only know that because i was up there so i actually charted the first time i did this i charted um a route and then cruise up here and I'm done okay I charted a route that crossed onto this road and used this service road up here but when I got to this little green point I realized that there was there there's a big fence there and it's private property and I'm not able to use it um, as inviting as it looks you can't see the fence line from up here except it looks awful suspicious when you look at this little line here so um, there's my route um, I can go ahead and tweak this uh, you can see I kind of missed it right here so I'm gonna pull this line down and uh, yeah I can do that okay it looks like I goofed that one up too so I'm gonna pull this one down here and etc I'm not gonna bore you Oops. control Z so as long as you get that little dot you can goof around and move it and I don't know what that was doing there it must have been grabbing onto something else okay so um, I have my route it's uh, 728 feet of gain 
Um, and this is an example of one of those routes that has some up and down on the way over. So if it's 728 feet over, I'm probably going to get a little bit of elevation gain when I come back because I have to go through a couple of valleys. So let's see what happens. I clicked on the out and back and this, this route actually has over a thousand feet of gain in when you consider the out and back. At the bottom of this uh, chart you can see the um, where some of these the, the big elevation gain is right here after one mile. You, so as we start out here we go down we come back up over this little peak here come down into this valley and then we start back up. So this little um, our profile view at the bottom is really handy and then as I draw, move my um, my cursor over the profile view at the bottom you can see my little uh, blue dot there move across the screen. So this is why we're getting some elevation gain on the way back is because you have to go back up these little hills. So I'm going to save that and we're pretty much done. The map's done. I can now um, bring that up on my cell phone and download it. Um, I'm going to throw in a clip on how to do the download to your phone where you're downloading um, uh, charts. Well, basically they show up on your phone. So let me just start with that. Is You, you just bring up the app on your phone and it, you list your maps. It shows up right there. Downloading the maps for offline use, it's super easy. And I'm going to show you how to do that in just a bit. So um, that's an example of how to use all trails um, drawing mode and why you want to be able to draw. And this is a really, really good example of, hey, I don't know where the summit is. I found it. Um, geez, now that I'm there, I can't find a way to it. And we're going to bring up the default chart here of all trails. And you'll see the terrain that I'm now going to be going over. So that profile view at the bottom makes a heck of a lot more sense. You can see that this trail that I was following actually comes over this little summit here. Um, it's 1,800 feet. Then it drops down off of that, goes into this little valley, goes over a little hump here. And then you drop down right about here and you start coming around this and you climb back up the mountain here. So now hopefully all of this has been brought together and it totally makes sense. Um, if it doesn't, um, I recommend that you just get in and play with it. Um, you can't break anything. If you do make a mistake when you're drawing, uh, just do a Control Z and it'll undo that. It's a really nice feature um, and it's very well implemented in this mapping application. The scenario and features that I want to show you involve um, a, a scenario where we're going to go out and camp somewhere, we're going to be there for a few days, and we want to get a list of all the summits in the area and we want to chart those all at once. So this is a really cool feature and what we're going to do is we're going to use sodamaps.org to do that. When you go there you'll get a view similar to this. Now I've zoomed in a little bit um, on the whole application so hopefully you can see it a little bit better. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to use um, a range mapping feature on this that is really cool. So here's what we're going to do is we want to define um, the point of where we're going to be at and then we want to draw a circle around that point and get all of the soda summits at that point. You could choose a city, um, campsite, what have you. Uh, in this case I know there's a soda summit right next to where I'm going to be camping. So let's use the latitude and longitude of that soda summit. So I've chosen the range mapping. I'm going to click on define range. I want a closed circle, although there are some other options. And I want a 50 mile radius. And I'm going to give it a latitude and longitude. So first we're going to punch in 34.118. And a negative. If we don't put the negative, we'll be out in the ocean somewhere. 109.57. Four, five. Okay. So let me drag this over. We're zoomed in. I'm going to click on map. And there we go. So underneath you can see it's listed a whole bunch of soda summits. And we're up in the Apache Sickreeves National Forest. Um, so there's a whole bunch of 10 pointers in here. Man alive, this is like Summit City. This is a bonanza of summits. So, um, 
you can see that it's probably centered on Green's Peak. Here are the list of summits on the left hand side. Uh, some of these have never been activated and you'll have to uh, dig into it to understand why but they're probably a little bit tough to get to. Uh, but that is a ton, ton of so soda summits. But what I want to do is just heck with it. I'm going to overlay all these babies um, on an all trails map. Let me show you how I'm going to do that. So I'm going to say export. Um, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to choose GPX file because that's what's supported over in all trails. And we're going to say create file. So it's downloading it and it's this uh, funky numbered file over here. So we're going to use that. I'm going to go ahead and just close this window and I'm going to jump over to all trails. We're in all trails. I'm going to go to history recordings and I'm going to say upload file and I'm going to go find that file that I had. It's in my temp directory here. It's a GPX file so let's find that guy. Here it is and then I'm going to say upload. It's going to ask me for a map name so my test map. All right, fine. Remember this is just a list of waypoints and now that it's done it should. Let's see it's uploaded. And now we'll choose Upload File. I'm going to choose the file from here, which is that funky name GPX file. I'll just do this one right here. And I'm going to say Upload uh, Waypoint Test. And it's uploaded green. And there we go. Here we are at All Trails. The next step is to go to History and then recordings. Uh, I'm going to make this just a little bit larger, make sure that you guys can see it. So we're going to go to recordings here. Um, at the bottom of the list of recordings, you'll see a button that says upload file. I'm just going to click in here and uh, find that GPX file. And uh, here's the one I want to upload. So I'm going to double click on that. I'm going to say upload it. It's going to ask for a name, so I'll say uh, Waypoint test. In my case, hit return and click OK. You can see it turned green and voila, it should load your map. And this is not what you want to see. So, just a quick explanation here. That is supposed to work. I called uh, or actually contacted uh, All Trails Tech Support and they acknowledge that they currently have a bug. I have used this feature before to great success. Um, they assured me that they're working on a bug fix for this and it should be out shortly. So by the time you start experimenting with this feature, um, hopefully they do have that fixed. Uh, it, they seem like a pretty solid company, so I expect that they will. I want to finish this video, so I'm going to move on to what should this thing look like when you're done. So the very last step you would do, and typically, you'd, again, you'd only see waypoints. You wouldn't see any routes yet. Um, you would go to this little button here that says save map. This turns it from a recording into an actual map. So we'll click that and then we'll go to our plan and set of maps. And I'm going to bring up one that I've already done so that you can see what it looks like when we're through charting. So uh, we're going to go to uh, Green's Peak area and I downloaded all of these and um, actually charted them. So I went through and you can see that some of them don't have uh, uh, paths to them yet, but you'll have a whole bunch on the map. For instance, here's an example of a couple that I have not drawn any routes to. So typically I would go in here and then uh, I click on this and uh, it already has all of this kind of info that was brought over from uh, 
soda, uh, soda maps, which is really cool. So they are already flagged and ready to go for you. You just need to draw in the maps like we've shown earlier in the video. Um, to show you what that looks like, um, I've gone ahead and done that for a bunch of these. So here's Mount Ord. Um, I've got a couple up here at Boundary View. Let's look at Greens Peak. This is actually a drive up. But uh, here's one that I drew in. And uh, what I did is I followed an old Forest Service road. I believe I had to jump to uh, the U.S. Topo to find this route. So this is a really good example of, um, geez, that route wasn't available or that the Topo didn't show. Oh, yeah, it did, actually. It did show a, a, a trail here or a road. Um, but if it hadn't, let's pretend that it didn't. Um, we'll jump to the U.S. Topo, and there that um, road is going up to this point about here, and then I just had to wing it. So basically drew a straight line up this uh, ridge line here. And this worked out pretty good. So I wanted to stay on this side of this uh, ravine in here and just kind of follow this uh, ridge-like thing. It's pretty steep in here, but not too bad. And uh, this turned out to be a really nice hike. Um, so... Um, I did a few others over here. As you can see, there's a Whiting Knoll. Um, I drew a couple of different routes to that. Um, so uh, there's a few in here. I, I drew a route that's actually a road that you can drive into. Um, and it looks like it went at the top of the mountain. Then there's also another another way up there. So sometimes you do want to draw a few routes uh, to the peak that you want to get to so that if you get there and you find out that oh geez this is this is private property or something you can take care of that so there's a whole bunch of them up here that i'm all prepared to uh, do a little soda activity on um, there's one other interesting feature here is after as you roll over some of these they actually get highlighted so uh, here is uh, this one you'll see up here right here when I roll over it it kind of gets bold what I could do is just give that a different color and make it like funky so it stands out um, because I, now I know that it's six miles let's just save that guy and that'll update the map and turn that particular route yellow that way I can find it in the list and I can say oh that one is 6.41 miles and it has a thousand feet of elevation, elevation gain on it so um, there you go. So there's a whole bunch of those. The other kind of interesting and sometimes frustrating feature is as you roll over these waypoints, it moves the map to that waypoint. Now, this is a really cool feature until you're like moving your mouse around and you accidentally hit this and it scrolls the map to like the other side of the earth. And so it can be a little frustrating, but if you go down and you say, oh, geez, where's St. Peter's Dome? Oh, there it is. Okay, now I can jump over here and zoom in on it. So this day, I should be able to hit St. Peter's Dome, uh, not too bad a hike in there, and then drive up here and either go this way or this way. Um, I can tell you from experience, I drove up here, uh, parked, and uh, hiked up. It's a beautiful area to be hiking. So there you go. That's how you can use um, soda maps to download a whole bunch of waypoints around an area that you're going to be at and then pop those quickly onto an uh, all trails map and then you can go in here and create some routes uh, by dropping in we'll go up here and you just basically go into routes as you can see I've, I've created a bunch of them and you say draw route and you do a new one so it's a really really cool feature uh, for anybody doing summits on the air uh, to quickly get up and run in for an area that you want to work. All right, that finishes up uh, all of the features that I wanted to show you on all trails around uh, charting. Um, so let's, uh, the, the last thing that I really want to jump into quickly is just a recap on how to use the phone. Uh, more, most importantly, um, how to get your phone out and download the maps for offline use. This is really important if you're going to be hiking um, because you probably won't have cell service and you don't want to be trying to suck those maps down over a really crummy cell service if you do. And that is why all of the mapping programs that I looked at um, support this feature. So let's take a look at that right now. 
this is the opening page that I see when I go to let me take two. This is the opening page that I see when I go to all trails. Um, what I can do is bring up trails that I have um, already stored on my PC. So let's bring up the one from yesterday. I'm just going to bring up a plan here and I'm going to type in Twin. So there's Twin Peaks. I'm going to bring this one up. Um, that was probably created out of a recording that I had done before. And actually I went up, I went it this way and then around to the left and I came back the same way. I kind of like that hike. Um, it's a little bit easier and I was able to crank right off there and get over to Costco and run out of their errands for the day. So one of the things that um, you can you need to do before you leave the house while you still have internet connection is download maps for offline use. That way if you don't have cell service you can bring the maps up and still get around without any issue. Um, as you can see I've already downloaded the one for all trails. I could download one for a satellite view and I generally bring down uh, all trails satellite and USGS that way I have all the information I could possibly need when using all trails on the road. Okay, um, the other thing that um, I use it quite a bit for is I can bring up previous recordings. Um, so just let me get rid of this here. And if we go down to, sorry, we'll go down to um, history. This is a history of all my recordings. Um, I can go to record and just record the current hike that I'm getting ready to go on. Um, and then of course there's exploring, looking for other trails that either people have recorded and published or published trails um, that people may have created or are actually published as more of a, a formal organization. For instance, a lot of state parks are already out there. You don't need to create your own chart. You can bring it up and then say create a map from that. But I typically do all my charting um, planning from home and then I just download the chart here. The one thing that you can't do um, that I found easily is, is to actually create a chart on the iPhone. Um, but the really, really cool thing about this is you can share um, any of your recordings or charts with other people. So if a friend of mine's going up to Sheephead, which is really hard to get to if you don't have a chart and there's nothing published, um, I can give him my all trails. I also bring up a chart and send it. There's a share feature that I send it to my wife and a search and rescue guy that I know. So they know where I'm going for the day. So that's the other thing. If you stick to your chart here and you uh, report in late or not reporting, um, they have a pretty good idea of where you were headed and how you're going to get there. So, and that's how you use all trails on the phone. The most important feature we covered was how to bring up a map that you've already uh, created in all trails and then downloading the mapping data uh, for that particular map. Um, it's really important, uh, obviously, when you're going to be out of cell range uh, to have that already on their phone and you can just run in air airplane mode. So it's a great feature and that's why you'll find it in all of the um, mapping applications I've seen for hiking. Um, we've covered a lot in this video. Um, we started out with requirements that you should consider for um, mapping applications. Uh, then we talked about a few of the top, or at least the top three that I saw out there. Uh, then we jumped over to All Trails, and I went through the features that I liked about All Trails and why I'm using it. And uh, speaking of use, we jumped into using uh, All Trails in detail about how to use pre made maps and then modifying those maps and making it your own, uh, creating a map from scratch. Uh, that is grabbing the waypoint and dropping it onto um, the uh, map and then charting a path to the summit. And then lastly, we covered one of the uh, coolest features for Summits on the Air, which is the ability to download a whole bunch of waypoints of summits in an area that you'd be working in. It could be uh, you're going to go in the area and do a little camping, or it could be all the summits around your house and drop them quickly onto a map and then all you need to do is go in and uh, uh, chart a path to the top of each of those summits. So I hope you found that uh, this was helpful to you. Um, 
If it was, leave me a note uh, in the comments. If it wasn't, uh, explain why. I'd be interested to know. Um, if you like this video, you might like the other videos that I've done on uh, soda called Soda 360. The first four were was a focus on activating. It included a intro on uh, why you do summits on the air for activators and chasers. Um, then I jumped into some of the planning that I do and preparation. Um, I covered a small section on charting, which uh, this is a lot more detail that I went through on that video. And the third one covered a reference activation. At least it showed you how I do it. Um, and then the last video, uh, I took my log and uploaded it to the SOTA website so I could get my points. So um, I, uh, that kind of covered the whole activation portion. I created another video just for chasers. If you've never chased summits on the air operators and you want to do that, that's a video you should go watch. It's a quick intro to what chasing is and how to do it. How to find that operator on which mountain, uh, point your antenna in the right direction, and then how to work that operator on the right frequency. Um, so take a look at that one if you're interested. And uh, well, I guess that's it. Thanks for watching. And uh, I'm going to say 73. And I hope to catch you on a Summit to Summit sometime in the near future. Have a great one, guys.